Hey, this is Daniel from Adorama. I'm up here in the Hudson Valley on this nice fall day making some portraits of Emily. So whenever I shoot outside like this and do these kind of portraits, I like to use a nice long lens. Can't always do that in the studio because I'm restricted on space. So I'm using my 70 to 200 Nikon lens here. And I'm also using a D500 camera, which is an APS size sensor, which is making my lens even have a smaller field of view. So it's actually the equivalent of almost like a 300, if you will, with the field of view. I'm gonna get a nice tight shot in on her, nice uh, out of focus areas. And one thing I love to do, and this is the simplest thing you can do when you're outside, especially if you're trying to travel light, is I've got my lens, my camera, I have a tripod, and a beautiful model, and I just look for a cool spot. So the most obvious thing to do is take your model and put them in the shade. So it's coming close to the end of the day, we've got some beautiful shade here, and I could just drop her in the shade, but Emily's got nice blonde hair, I've got beautiful kind of uh, warm looking grass behind her that's just getting hit by light that's not in the shade with us which is going to overexpose and i'm using that as my background essentially giving her a halo of light behind her i've got down nice and low some of the grass in front of her will actually create some little out of focus areas possibly in some shots and we're going to take some nice uh portraits of nice, nice and low so the way that i do this is i set my camera on aperture priority to get my initial exposure but generally when you have so much light behind the subject that could be thrown off a little bit so i'm basically taking the first shot looking at it then switching to manual and leaving it locked in at the exposure that i think is right for our face so of course i'm shooting raw but i have my camera set uh, white balance to shade because that's where i am and i like for the pictures to look uh good right out of the camera if possible i'm gonna switch my mode back to manual now um the the first shot that the Aperture priority chose a 500th of a second at 2.8. I thought it was a bit dark for her, so I'm gonna go to 250 at 2.8 and see what that looks like. Let's do a little test shot, Emily. Good. There we go. And I'll just do a quick preview. And yep, yeah, that looks pretty good. So we'll move around a bit and we'll see what works out low. The idea here is I'm gonna keep myself and Emily nice and low, keep the background out of focus and just bright, pretty light behind her. So let's see what we can get here. Okay, so one important thing here is you can see she's in basically dappled light. So sometimes she's getting a bit of light on her nose. You don't want that. You want either no light on her face or light that you're controlling. So maybe a lot of light on one side of her face or just heavily backlit or face totally in the sun, but we don't want just a little bit of light on her nose. That's gonna look bad in post. So let's uh, work a little more towards, there you go. And let's shoot some more. Okay, so for the second shot, I decided to just use this kind of beautiful fall sun. It's a little bit low in the sky, and it's like nice and punchy and crisp, and for some people, that's just gonna be so great. Hard light does not work on everybody, so definitely make sure you choose your subject for this accordingly. Emily's got nice, strong features, so it's really working for her. Just watch those shadows. Sometimes it's gonna be nice to have shadows in the eyes, but sometimes not. So you're gonna have to play around with the shadows a lot, move the subject around. Again, I'm still using my 200 millimeter lens. I backed up to get some longer shots. I went in close to get some nice uh, close head shots. We can really play around with it, keeping the background pretty much out of focus by using uh, 2.8. And here I'm just using aperture priority because it's in a situation where the camera's meter is working really well. I've had to make a little bit of adjustments, like a third of a stop here and there, but generally aperture priority is totally working for me here uh, using the same camera, D500. Like I said, this isn't perfect for everyone, and also sometimes you might not want so much contrast on somebody's face, depending on what you're going for. If that's the case and you want to use some of the sun and mix it together, the next step is to add a flash. So we're going to do that for the next set. So sometimes you're in a situation where you've got the hard light coming in, that's really beautiful, but you need more control. Like in this particular background we found, I really liked it, but Emily's face was literally half in shadow, half in the sun during like some of her poses. So rather than restrict her, I decided to pull the flash out. Basically, I'm using high speed sync so I can keep the same feel as everything else I was doing. I'm set at about 2,000th of a second at 2.8, which is the right exposure for the sun, and of course the background. And I've dialed in my 
exposure compensation, my flash exposure compensation down about half a stop to make it look the way that I like it to look. You can overpower the sun, you can have it barely touch in, you can make it completely equal. That's kind of up to you how you want to balance it. I like it to show a little bit of shadow on her face, but to have plenty of detail in there because it's easy enough to crunch those shadows in post, but if it's too much shadow and you bring it up, it can sometimes look really noisy. So uh, that's how I decided to shoot this one. I'm just using a small octagon, two foot octa. Dave's standing basically just out of frame, just filling in the shadows on her face. So when you're shooting outside on location, remember a long lens can really help. It can help get the subject isolated from the background. And also just use your basic light theory. Hard light, the light coming directly from the sun. Soft light, basically light coming through the trees is a big shade, right? That's like soft light. Or mixing the two together. And finally using tools like flashes or reflectors or whatever you have to give yourself a lot of control. That's all gonna work together to give you great shots when you're on location. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to Adorama TV. Also, if you want to see some more behind the scenes shots from this particular video and more shots of Emily, follow me on Facebook at Daniel Norton Photographer. I'll see you next time on set.